segment for two Golden Black Live. And uh, we're, we're joined now by Brian Newbert. And, and uh, there's a little basketball game tomorrow. And I'll start with, with you, Brian. Uh, uh, you've written a lot this week and talked a lot about uh, the Boilermakers trending. And we got to, uh, Larry Clisby joining us, just, just came in the studio. will join us in segment three. But uh, uh, tell us where you think uh, Purdue is and where Indiana might be. The Hoosiers obviously on a three-game losing streak. And uh, this is a desperate game for Indiana tomorrow, too, as well. Yeah. Obviously, this looks on the surface like uh, a game between two programs headed in different directions right now, two teams headed in different directions. Purdue seems to be seems to have a lot of things coming together right now. Yeah. And when you came into the season with so many new players, so many young players, it always stood to reason to suggest that around the midway point of the season, stuff would really start to come together. I think that's what you're seeing. I think you're seeing them playing the best team basketball at both ends of the floor. You've seen them play all season. You're seeing them take care of the basketball better than they have all season, although they've not been bad all year. Uh, there have been some spells where they've not been so great, but they're taking really good care of the basketball. They're being a little bit more efficient offensively. Trevion Williams is transforming them uh, mm -hmm. from an offensive perspective on the glass and whatnot, really kind of completing them, giving them the sort of balance maybe they didn't have earlier in the season. And just overall looks like a team that just got a, a bunch of stuff coming together for it at the right time. Indiana obviously has had some injuries. Um, they're not playing very well otherwise. Uh, obviously, Nebraska really seemed to throw them off their game defensively. Yeah. And, um, you know, Purdue's not going to do that. Purdue's not going to zone them. Um, so Purdue's going to have to play good, solid, disciplined defense uh, tomorrow and um, try to get Indiana into that discomfort zone that Nebraska did um, with a very different style of defense. But obviously, Indiana's got some issues beyond the injuries right now, but all of those issues can go away real quick when you have the sort of talent they have. They've got a great big man in Juwan Morgan. Obviously, they have a elite talent in R Romeo Langford, Langford as well. And uh, anytime you have two <clears throat> players of that level, uh, you have to take them very seriously. Yeah. And game, games are always about matchups, right, Brian? Yeah. And uh, reading a lot of your stuff, I know you talked about turnovers, the reduction of those being a big key to this, mm -hmm. what, six wins? In seven games, um, are there one or two matchups individually in this game on Saturday that you think will go the longest way to determining the victor? Yeah, it, it would be really easy to say Purdue's got to shut down Romeo Langford just because he's the big name, he's the lottery pick. Juwan Morgan is a really good player, a really experienced player, a really versatile player. Purdue obviously has been, as I mentioned, transformed by Travion Williams. The presence he's given them on the glass offensively whatever else, there are still some some defensive limitations. Now, he has gone against Nick Ward. He has gone against Ethan Happ. He has held his own against two of the best big men in the Big Ten. Juwan Morgan is right there with those guys. He's a physical player, but he's also a versatile player. He can face the basket, shoot it a little bit, drive it. Um, he is going to give Travion Williams a handful from a defensive perspective. But I do think the fact Purdue's got a physical presence now to counter Juwan Morgan really kind of changes the way you have to look at that matchup. But I do think Juwan Morgan is the guy Purdue has to has to do the best job on. And then not let some random guy go off. Yeah. You know, what you can't do is you can't give up five threes to Devontae Green. Yeah. Or, you know, you can't let Justin Smith go crazy in the open floor. You can't let him steal points uh, either in the open floor or off the offensive glass, whatever it may be. Yet you, you have to do a good job on Romeo, but I think that Juwan Morgan's the guy that really is the problem that Purdue has to not let materialize. Yeah, and you look at that, look at that matchup and look at uh, what – it'll be an interesting thing, and you've written about this a little bit as well, and we'll, I want to ask Larry this too, but uh, <coughs> what do you – how does Purdue line up uh, defensively? You know, does Dojel Eastern uh, spend some time with Romeo Langford? Do you see some of that as a possibility? Do you, uh, um, do you see Purdue change some things up defensively to, to, to deal with that? Well, the only precedent we really have is at Texas, Purdue cross-matched in the backcourt, put Nojel Eastern on Kerwin Roach, yeah. did a great job, but then it was Matt Coleman at the point who really did them in. Right. Yeah. Had Purdue stopped Matt Coleman, Purdue would have won that game. Um, they did not. Uh, he got a lot of good rhythm threes that he made when he hadn't been necessarily making them before, just like Texas's whole team. Yeah. I think probably it comes down to 
how afraid of you? How afraid are you of that second guy for Indiana? How afraid are you of Al Durham or yeah. of of Devontae Green, whoever it may be, that you can put your best, take your best off of that guy and put him on the better guy? If I had to guess, Purdue puts no Jell Eastern on Romeo Langford, puts Carson Edwards on the point. I don't know that for a fact. I do know no Jell Eastern is really good on the ball. That's where his impact has been felt most and is felt every single game for Purdue. Um, I know it's always been a big part of his defensive philosophy to disrupt the other team from, um, you know, kind of getting into their offense smoothly. Mm-hmm. Right. Not to say Carson Edwards couldn't do that if he were guarding the one as opposed to No Gel Eastern, but No Gel Eastern it might be the best painters ever had at Purdue at doing that. That's an awful big statement, but I think he either is that right now or he's certainly going to be in the future. Who needs to be that sidekick Saturday? We know Carson Edwards is going to get his 20 to 24 points. Uh, who needs to be, I guess, his Robin, so to speak? Or who has the best chance to have that next best game after Carson Edwards? Is it going to be Williams inside? Will it be Ryan Klein? Is there a matchup for one of those two guys or somebody else, you think, for them to step up and have a big game on Saturday, maybe to compliment right. Carson Edwards? Well, I think that from day one, that guy's been Ryan Klein. Uh, he's shooting, I believe, 52% from three-point range since Big Ten play resumed. He's shooting the ball really well. I don't know if there's a broader picture reason for that, but when you look at the way Purdue's playing offensively, they're playing more cohesively, I think, than they ever have this season. I think when you look at the Rutgers game, that was their best ball movement game of the season. I think you saw some of that, too, at Wisconsin at times maybe not at other times. I know Michigan State's still fresh in everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. But by and large, this Big Ten season, since it resumed, uh, Purdue has looked more like last year's Purdue team as opposed to the brand new, uh, at times not so functional, team that started this season. So I think that's probably played into Ryan Klein's play Mm -hmm. lately and and kind of bodes well for him uh, kind of moving forward. But also when you look at Travion Williams, what he's done, you know, you're probably, you might not be far off from it getting to that point where people start throwing double teams at him. And he's been making pretty good decisions, and he's been getting the ball moving. And when that happens, as Purdue showed better than anybody in the country the last couple years before this one, when that ball gets moving and you make good decisions and you make basic plays, people get wide open shots. And Ryan Klein can make those shots. Sasha Stefanovic can make those shots. Yeah, saw that. Purdue's got a bunch of guys who can make those shots. And Purdue shoots pretty well in Mackey Arena this year. Purdue plays much better in Mackey Arena um, based on their body work thus far than they do elsewhere. I think that bodes well for tomorrow. But to get back to Tom's question, I would probably say Ryan Klein. Yeah. I want to ask Tom a question because we talked about a little story on the site with the history of this uh, series. And there have been so many games. And Larry – Clisby can weigh into some of the great ones as well. It all means we've been around a long time, I guess, and that's a good thing. But, you know, pent-up great environments. Tomorrow with the weather, it could be nutty in there in terms of, and you've seen some ones and I've seen some ones. uh, uh, There's just nothing quite like Purdue and Indiana. No, I I made a comment on the message board um, about going back to the 1980s when IU come into Mackey Arena about five minutes before tip-off, the teams are warming up, and Bob Knight would come strolling yeah. out of that tunnel in the red yeah. sweater and just a cascade of booze yeah. that would rain down on him. Just the energy, uh, the lightning rod that he was, that he brought to that rivalry really made it special in that era. But you're right, Alan. We've been uh, privy uh, to a lot of these games over the years, yeah, in right. Mackey in particular. I talked about 1992, a very pedestrian Purdue team that went to the NIT. Last game of the year, senior day, they knock off number four Indiana, 61-59. to The fans actually rushed the court. That was a, a loss that cost Indiana the Big Ten title, cost Indiana a number one NCAA seed. And, again, it was an IU team that was extremely talented and did go on to the Final Four that year. Yeah, right. So that was, that was a fun yeah. game. 1988, of course, the last time the triplets – you know, Troy Lewis, Todd Mitchell, Stevens, they clobbered IU over here in Mackinac. It was a lot of fun. So I could go on and on, but those were a couple that, that really stick out. I had the Glenn Robinson team in 94. Yeah, yeah. Came back from 10 points down in the second half. I think he had 33 points in that game. Special, too. Yeah, 20 below zeros. I remember the weather that one it, as well. They, another crazy weather day. Brian, Arch Mil- Archie Miller and Matt Painter, 
don't appear to be. Don't, I don't think we're going to see Knight Katie. They're just different. They're different personalities, certainly. But tell me about what you know. Maybe the impact of what Archie Miller has brought to Indiana, and uh, uh, and what kind of guy on the sidelines. You know, we we obviously saw him last year, obviously in Bloomington. But uh, the personality that he that you've watched, not only in recruiting but also uh, on the sidelines, and and what will that bring come bring to the rivalry? Do you think? Well, it depends if it works. Yeah. Um, you know what he's trying to instill, and I think obviously, obviously the jury remains out. Um, only a year, a season and a half in, um, is he's trying to make that more of a defensive-minded program than it is, than it's it been, has been. Yeah. Which is which hasn't been. You know, it's not been a very defensive-minded program. Um, He's trying to instill that first and foremost. He's trying to instill a certain toughness. He's trying to instill some basics that probably slipped on them um, under his predecessor. Obviously, Indiana is always going to be one of those schools that is going to recruit at a very high level. Uh, I think to a certain extent, they're going to kind of be in the one and done sort of game if they can get them. Um, and that's going to lead to some roster turnover periodically. Um, but what he's obviously trying to do is just trying to make Indiana more like, you know, the Indiana of old, mm -hmm. not the Bob Knight Indiana, yeah. but some of those general principles about yeah. toughness, playing the game the right way, playing, playing defense, playing defense, especially. Um, and obviously, obviously time will tell uh, if that works or not. You know, he's, he's had to recruit a higher level of player uh, to come in and play right away here in the situation he's in because he wasn't left with a whole lot other than Juwan Morgan. Um, a lot of the freshmen he needed to probably be pretty significant contributors this season, you know, for whatever reason, um, haven't been, in part because of some injuries. Jerome Hunter probably yeah. would have helped them quite a oh, bit. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, Robert Finnessy's coming off the concussion. Yeah. Demise Anderson's just probably not ready. Um, but uh, he has to get these young players up to speed pretty quick uh, in order to start really showing people whether or not his the, the you know, quote unquote culture he's trying to instill is going to is going to work. Yeah. If he can get that there, you know, you're going to have two programs that kind of stand for largely the same thing. You know, playing the game the right way, toughness, defense. But you know, obviously Purdue is there, yeah. or at least you know, pretty consistent with it. Um, obviously, the, the, the personnel changed pretty considerably this year. But if Indiana can get there, too, the, you know, the rivalry is going to be a lot of fun again. All right, what are we, what are we going to see tomorrow? I'll start with you, Brian. I mean, I know you feel at least Yeah, Purdue plays. Purdue has been really good and really consistent at home uh, all year long. Uh, obviously, this is going to be uh, a pretty great environment. You know, I don't know how much this really matters. Indiana doesn't have a lot of guys who've played in this game. Purdue doesn't necessarily either. I think maybe they've got five guys yeah. who've played in Mackey. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. Purdue's got five guys who've played in Assembly Hall. I'm yeah. not sure Indiana's got three or four guys who've yeah. played in Mackey. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, you know, I, I think the home court advantage is going to be significant for Purdue. They play better at home. They seem to make better decisions at home. They play together better at yeah. home. Um, they're playing well right now, too, on top of that. Obviously, Indiana's got some injury issues. I think, you know, Purdue – is catching them at a good time because they're struggling a little bit. They've lost three games in a row. They've got some health issues. I just think the way Purdue is trending when framed up against the way Indiana is trending, um, it would seem like you know all signs point to Purdue. But when you have talents like Juwan Morgan and Romeo Langford, you know you never take anything for granted against them because because Romeo Langford's the best freshman scorer this league has seen since D'Angelo Russell, if not a better one, and. <clears throat> He can get you 30, um, and if he does, obviously that changes the complexion of the game entirely. Tom, you never know. quickly, what do you think? Yeah, you real think? quick, we talked about turnovers. I think that that would be the difference for Purdue. Brian also talked about Purdue's ability to show it can shoot well at home in Mac yeah. Arena, too. I think that's going to be the difference. The inexperience of Indiana in this big game environment, in that atmosphere on Saturday afternoon, yeah. Purdue's ability to, to move the ball, get open shots, and hit him in Mac Arena, and Purdue's ability – to limit turnovers, which has been so key during the last month or so to their success, I think are going to be the factors that, that allow Purdue to get out of Mackey with a win on Saturday. It may go into the second half because Indiana is a wounded, dangerous animal at this point. They're yeah. desperate, so you're going to get their best fight. But again, 
It's going to be a dog fight, but I think in the end, in those last five minutes, you see Purdue uh, pull it out. All right. All right. We will uh, look forward to uh, watching that. That'll be less than 24 hours from now in Mackey Arena. All right. We're going to take a short break, bring in Larry Clisby, and he's got uh, some things to say and a little bit of a knowledge base about uh, Purdue basketball. The legendary play-by-play uh, -play announcer will join us in the third and final segment of Golden Black Live. Stay tuned. We'll see you in a couple minutes.